So yeah, um, refuse recording. I don't know. What are you asking for, Michael? How do you refuse recording of what? Oh, I was just curious. I mean, when I go down and record something, I just go to the clerk and give them money and they say, okay, thank you. Yeah, some, some are like um, that and they're supposed to be like that. Unlike Alex's situation. <laughs> yeah, I was he's just, just in that I, town. Yeah. I was just chatting with Alex, but I've got an attorney friend. He said, anything you want recorded, just drop it off my office on Friday. You could do that Friday too. before noon, leave yeah. me 26 bucks and I'll record it. But yep. uh, you can probably get a lawyer to do it. Yeah, that's probably one but, way to do it. Go um, to a lawyer. Yeah. But when I listened to uh, Alphonse Fajolo, He's big on uh, filing bar complaints. So that yeah, doesn't help my clients. Know. Nah. No. I only okay. do it to be a nuisance. It doesn't help my clients. I'll just I'll do it once in a while, but it's not my solution. That's not gonna help my client. Yeah. I'm just I want to help the client. Yeah, I can care less about the attorney, but but yeah, maybe an attorney helps, but you know, we have so many ways of getting it's public record. You can't not record something. I don't care if it's not about real estate. We have so many things recorded that are not about real estate. Where's Tefan? immigration and other id needs yeah okay i understand that um the llc is how you hold okay so i just described using an llc to separate property rights from your estate this is what we're doing so if i have a house i'm the only title holder and i convey the property to an llc in which i'm the owner i not moved it from my estate all i did was change the title of the property so how do i get it out of my estate well my estate consists of me and the rights I have to spend or sell property. It does not consist of the rights that I have with somebody else who has similar rights. We're two different people. The law looks at us as two different people having different sets of rights and prerogatives. So if I combine the two people together to hold the property rights, and I do that in the, under the title of the LLC that I control, now the ownership is completely outside of the purview of any taxing authority. This answers the question. The LLC is how you hold it away from yourself with the ownership not being exclusively yourself. I mean, you could do it. I start them out that way sometimes because it's easier to get up and running that way. But in some cases where a client's got an immediate situation, where he's under a debt collections, IRS situation, levies. Yeah. From the beginning, I'm either going to not have him be a signer or have him be an owner and a signer and or just an owner and not a signer. You know, there's all kinds of combinations there. Um, yeah. I'm not going to talk about where to travel. The definition of drivers. I know drivers. I know all that stuff. I don't want to go that in that. Um, yeah. Remember that you have a way to work around an IRA. I don't know what that means to work around an IRA, but an IRA is just, you know, it's a pension fund that gives you tax deferment. I don't like it because I think it's a way to exploit people. I think it's a way to steal your, the value of your money, the time value, because you don't have any other way to do it. You don't have any, you don't have knowledge or you're not using your ability to invest your own money. You're giving it to somebody else to invest, which is an insane person. See, and then we criticize Wall Street for what Wall Street does. And they're, right, we have even movies on this. What was it, Gordon Gecko, right? All these movies criticizing Wall Street. Well, whose money are they using? Yours? They're using your credit card accounts. They're using all your loan money. They're using your pension funds. And we're criticizing them. <laughs> we're the chumps. I mean, that's the crazy thing. People have credit card debt. And then the banks are... They have to buy your pension funds. So we're investing in our own debt. So, so as far as using biometric data to access your funds, what they're doing is on the, on the uh, cryptocurrency, they, they let you get in there and get the cryptos. And then when you want to get it out, they say, oh, yeah, we need your biometric data. I think that should be illegal. It probably is illegal. Um, but what you can do is stop dealing with these. Know, know what the whole deal is. Like put in you know, $100 and see what happens when you try to take it out, right? Test it. And then uh, put a lien on your data. I mean, you guys should be doing this for Coinbase and everybody else. Someone is, is retired and has an IRA. Is there a way to get? Yeah, take your money out of the IRA. There's two ways to go. The hard way or the easy way. The easy way is, I guess, it depends on how you look at it. The easy way is to, to pay your fees 
and your taxes on it, or at least, you know, you'll end up with a tax bill. And, uh, and then you can run the clock on the IRS. That's, that's one way, or, or you just pay it. Just, I mean, you'll probably come out ahead, even if you paid the tax on the IRA that was exempt, you took it out, you got to pay the tax to get it out from the umbrella of the IRA. That, I only recommend that to people that are, let's say, under the age of 40, that actually, when I, I can tell by talking to them on the phone, if they're the type of people that would be uh, willing to invest or take that money out for a run, okay? If you're 65, I'm probably not going to suggest that to you. I'm probably going to suggest use your IRA for your intended purpose. I, I want to make the least changes. Why should I tell someone who's 65, who's never invested in his life, to cash out of your IRA, create a dispute with the IRS, and then start investing. That, that, that's not even being responsible. I'm not saying the person is stupid. It's just, it's not practical. I wouldn't even recommend that for my parents. So Alex, what? I, I had a quick question that I was uh, talking to my partner about just, uh, and we wanted to run it by you. And does a lien, um, does it take precedent or, or does alimony take precedent in a divorce proceeding? Okay, alimony, that's a matter of um, a, a court order divorce decree is a lien. It's okay, so if someone, lien. all right, so if someone has a lien, if, if you were to have a lien against, say, uh, uh, one of the parties in a marriage before a divorce, does that mean that the alimony can't be collected until that lien is No, not cleared? necessarily. You got to be more specific, but the divorce decree handles all the property rights. It's comprehensive. Mm, okay. So it's gonna it's gonna factor in that lien that was existing before. Okay. It was just kind of a quiz question. Thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Alimony is a matter of the court's order, which is another thing that I address in my series because the court is simply telling you how to reallocate your resources. What business does it have of doing that? Right. All right. Got so. It exchanges want to have video calls, right? Because they know there's people like me out there that are giving you things to say in writing and they want to talk to you on the phone to see if they want to look at your face, see if you know what you're doing, right? I love to talk to, I wish I could do it for everybody. They, they'll recognize me. They'll be like, oh, we, we saw that guy before. So that's why it's important to kind of figure out, like, for example, when they ask you for things like we see, okay, so you, they ask you for your, the bank account, your personal bank account, when you want to open an LLC account. And my response to that is, well, what business is that of yours? And what information do you actually need out of it? And what, do you, what is it that you want? You want to investigate all the people I'm related to? That's what they want to do. They want to find out who you're getting money from. It's all political. If you're, if you're, you know, in, if you're dealing with like, let's say, for example, you subscribe to Gun Magazine or something, maybe, you're, maybe the bank's going to say, we don't like you. You know, that's how, that's how it's going. So there's just, you know, you want to ask what the purpose is for the request of information. What is the purpose? How does this, how does this factor into qualifying me to have, a, have you as a service provider for, for banking services? Are you conducting a criminal investigation? What is your document retention policy? What insurance and what liability do you have for a data breach? If I give you this information, you're more liable than if I don't. If I give it to you, I'm telling you right now that it's, it's worth a lot to me where it's worth a lot in itself, right? So there's ways to have a communication. I've done so many videos and articles on this, um, but that's what I would look at. Um, so if someone's selling a home that's it's in his name, can, can he create a private and put in the proceeds? No. So, so once you sell property in the name of something, that whatever it is, if it's you, you're liable for the proceeds. You, that was a disposition of property, disposition of property. Uh, so you want to make sure that the title is in the way you want it. How do you want that property to be seen? That I sold it or that my company sold it? My company sells it. I can choose what my tax treatment is. I can right. make so it deferred. It's pretty too late for them, basically. It is. It yeah. is. You're on the hook, right. I hate to say. Yeah, Yeah, I know. Well, see, they now they're really interested in an LLC now, but I'm like, I think it's too late on that. Well, one. you know, okay. So I, I tell people that's your tuition, right? <laughs> Uh, well, I'm going to send them to you anyway, but the, okay. the, uh, but the other thing is they're going to, they're buying a property and they've kind of gone through, you know, all, everything you've got to do to, you know, get the thing in escrow and all that kind of stuff. They can't really create the LLC now for. 
No, it's okay. Just just buy the property. Put it in your name. You're buying the property. Right. It's when you sell it that you have that liability because you're still going to pay the property tax. You know, you're still going to have to pay the insurance. You're still somewhat liable. You know, ultimately you're liable. So. So then they should put the title into the name of the LLC once they get that so that they hold it like that for the future. At some point, because you still get tax benefits and write-offs for mortgage payments, interest payments, right? Even if if the title is held in an LLC, you still have a beneficial owner because the bank's not going to let you tr- convey the title unless you retain beneficial interest. So mm-hmm. you're, you're getting benefits out of it, right? But it's yeah. when you sell it. So when you sell it, if you're going to, if you think it's going to sell in two months, Go ahead and convey the title however you want. The, if the bank objects, it, it'll be too late before the bank gets to do anything about it until you sell the property. All you care about is a 1099 going to the LLC. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, good. I'll tell them because they, they, they tend to flip things, but I think they may hang on to this one. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll just buy it whatever is the most convenient because you're going to be the borrower anyways. Title yeah. however is the most convenient. And then maybe later on, part of an estate plan, maybe you move it out of your name or whatever, or especially when you go to sell it, if there's any proceeds from it, right? Mm-hmm. Convey, it for, convey it. You got to, you got to record the conveyance, the quick claim deed on the public record. And you got to do it yourself. You cannot give it to your title company or your lawyer or anything. They won't record it and they will never do it right. They want you to have the liability. I know it sounds like I'm a conspiracy theorist, but I've just no. seen so many cases. So what, so should, what should I tell them to do with that new title then? Well, when they have the title and they've got the property they want, just let them know that at some point, if they're going to sell it, they're going to receive, you know, profit, let's call it. Uh, Maybe they don't want to have it in their names. In in that case, they just file a quick claim deed. And they name, like, for example, let's say the property is 1123 Elm Street. I would call it 1123 Elm Street LLC and record the quick claim deed for myself to that LLC uh, a week before the closing. Got and then it. make sure that every, make sure the contract is assignable. And even if it's not, you can make it assignable. I mean, the buyer's not going to care. Right. I don't have a problem with that, so. Yeah. You know, I, 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 before I go, you know, I don't want to take up too much time, but I had a question on another legal thing, but it's not really related to an LLC. So I don't want to kind of usurp the time here. If, but um, I had a, and, and it may fall into a more, uh, not, I don't know if it's civil or criminal, but I had um, a a nonprofit uh, organization that was holding donations for me for a project. They were my, um, oh, I can't even think of now what it was, but they, they, yeah, they, exactly. And okay. then what happened was um, the organization, without my knowledge, it, It basically, there's about $13,000 in there for the project. And unknown to me, they, the organization closed, the board dissolved. And I called the executive director. I said, Hey, you know, our agreement was that you were holding that money for me. He goes, well, I don't know. I don't know what they did. I left, you know, I left months ago. And I said, well, wait a minute. You know, so I don't know. This was, this is a while back. I kind of went into like this apathetic thing about it. I was like, oh man, you know. This is, I don't know what I'm going to do. Okay. I don't know uh, what to but, do on that situation because I'd have to see more facts. But when you're when you're using a nominee, make sure that you sec- secure your rights and right. they understand what's going on. And there's different ways of doing that. Right. Um, anyway, we can talk yeah. about that another time, maybe. Yeah, we sure can. Uh, I just helped someone in another country set up. An, I mean, he has a lot of money, so he's building a community. And uh, I had him use nominee nominee situation like boards of directors. And right. So there's a certain way to do it. So you still protect your interests. And he, mm-hmm. he has to do it for many reasons. Um, yeah. So, so there's a question here. I like this one. Is there any way possible to exclude the court? This is what I talk about. So how do you exclude the court from child custody, even with a divorce? Well, you know, there could be a custody issue without a divorce. Usually there's not, but this is what I'm explaining in my material. So I'll just tell you guys. Very simple version. You have a postnuptial agreement or prenuptial agreement. It could be one line long. I'm not saying this is the way to go, but you would simply say that all disputes involving any matters related to the marriage must be resolved by compulsory and binding arbitration, period. That divests the court of getting involved. That sentence right there will defeat your entire state legislature and your judges. 
that gives you all the power. Now it, it falls on your shoulders to understand what you're doing because now you've got to deal with the arbitration system, which is very manageable. It's outside what the legislature had intended for your family without consulting with you, all right? But that's the way you do it, okay? I mean, that's the way I think, I'm sure there's probably another way. Now there's some other nuances in there because there's, a mat there's matters of alimony and child support and there's provisions for waiving public benefits. You gotta be careful about that, how you do that in the contract. Um, and then also where in the contract, it covers things like state compelling interest. And I wanna get too far into that. It's in my materials in my course. Uh, but we can we can uh, we can cover that when my course comes out. Uh, I'm both parties agree. Okay, so if you want to, okay, so the whole idea behind a postnuptial is not to show the court. I mean, what we want to do is just show the court why it doesn't have jurisdiction. Well, why is that? Well, because in the postnuptial agreement, there's a binding arbitration clause, right? The other party's going to have to stipulate to that. If he or she doesn't stipulate to that, I'll just bring the contract in. But I don't need the judge to agree with me. I don't care what the judge thinks. He doesn't have authority. I do. The other person does. It's still in our, you know, our way of handling it. The judge has nothing to say about it. All he can do is order you to go to what you said you're going to do, arbitration. He can only do that. And once it's resolved and there's an arbitration award, the judge is allowed to confirm it. Okay, unless there's some unconscionability or fraud. And one way to, to make sure that your agreement is not considered like it was under duress or something is you just have an agreement executed on a periodic basis. The same exact agreement. Once the, you execute the same agreement three months after you first execute it, who's gonna, which of you is gonna say, I didn't really mean to do that? I mean, we all have an anniversary, a wedding anniversary. Why not make that part of the wedding anniversary? Yes, let's agree to those terms again. What are the terms? Child custody. What are the terms of child custody in my family? Well, here's how it works. I provide the home, the shelter, the convenience, the comfort for my children, for my wife. And then my children can come and go as they please. They have a bedtime. Uh, we take them places if they want to go somewhere. That's child custody. Don't tell me there's no child custody agreement and don't tell me the court's gonna impose a child custody agreement or terms when I already have one. It's how we live every day. I just haven't reduced it to writing, but I will <laughs> if I need to, right? Um, yeah, I meant to exclude the course. So uh, ways to exclude the court with cases of divorce as domestic violence. Okay, so domestic violence. So domestic violence, if there's an allegation of domestic violence, there needs to be an evidentiary hearing. So that's number one. So if there is evidence, bona fide evidence of domestic violence, I would say the family court still does not have jurisdiction. I think the police do. I think criminal court does. So, but that I can't help you with. So if there's some violence or something, neglect or abuse, can't help you there. Let me turn this light on over here. All right. So there's a lot of things we can cover. And so my idea is that we want to retain the power to do what we want to do. If you, if you have abuse, abuse situation, you got the criminal statutes in there, okay? Yeah, so anything else? Anyways, I'm really excited about this whole thing on the family court. I just think that um, this is very important. People have been getting their bus kicked for years. I mean, women included. They're being, they're being exploited. They don't understand the basics. The basics are that if you have a marriage, that's, that's the un union of two people. You cannot have an adversarial relationship, even if one party wants to leave the marriage. And I'm going to sound crazy by saying this, but let's say the wife wants to leave the marriage and maybe she does. And maybe she, she's going to have to either do a couple of things. One is maybe the husband says, you know, okay, fine. If you want to leave the marriage, I still want to help you. I want to support you. I'm going to give you money or whatever. That's up to him. That's his prerogative. And if not, she leaves, but she, she can do whatever she needs to do. But for, and maybe there's no abuse or anything like that, but she's still the wife. Just because someone says the word divorce somewhere in a, in a written record somewhere doesn't, what is that? Someone just made that up. What's a vow? What's a vow for? Okay. We have to honor this. It's a law, the law of marriage. It's a, it's a law. Respect it. Yeah, you can leave, but you're still married. Your relationship has changed. 